when I got into the low carbohydrate world, it was pretty easy for me to transition onto basically a zero carbohydrate diet. It's easy for me to stay on carnivore. And so I get really um, myopic on that. I want people to kind of do the same thing. And I realize exactly what you're saying that for a lot of people, that's not really very sustainable. And a lot of people can't do that as easy as I can. So before we get into your protocol and what you teach people, let's talk about the different energy sources in food. We know that we have three major macronutrients. Can you kind of talk about each one and how they're used inside the body and which one are actually energy? Yeah. So I, I, I break this down into a really simplistic, like probably overly simplistic way, but I think of fats as being like low impact fuel. So that's fats are perfect for fueling podcasting, speaking, mental stuff, reading, writing, creating. That's like, a, it's like great for that sort of thing. If you're working outside all day, digging holes or running triathlons, there might not be the best energy source or the most efficient for you. That's what I think carbs are great for. Carbs are great high impact fuel, but they're really dictated like how much you're going to be able to use your carbohydrates is dictated by your activity level. So if you're always running, jogging, moving around all the time, you're going to need probably more carbs than someone else. But the, the fact is that we live in a time that we don't necessarily need to be moving all the time. We're not farmers. So we can really get away with having a lot more limited carbs or going zero carb like a carnivore, like you're talking about. So, and then um, protein, I don't necessarily even think of this as a, as a fuel source, more so of like um, recovery and, and rebuilding. So something that we need every, all day, every day to rebuild our muscles, to recover from like the, the work we're putting in. And then protein is also really important as for, in terms of creating the enzymes for our, a lot of natural processes in our body. So it's incredibly important, but it's not necessarily like the energy source that, yeah. that carbohydrates or fats are. That's I mean, perfect. How did, how did I do there? I feel like, I mean, you, you know, this stuff. Like, what no, you, you did great. <laughs> you did awesome. I explain it the same way. It's like protein is what you need to build things with. And it's part of your structure. And it's very important. It's just not the best primary fuel source. You have to kind of fuel your body either with carbohydrates or fat. And, and maybe that would be a good segue into talking about why the standard American diet, why a normal typical diet out there fails. Can you tell us why the standard American diet is the worst for most people's health? Woo, yes, I would love to talk about this because I, I think this like, I, I've been like the more I've gotten in, it gotten into like the low carb world, talk, talking to people who are deep into carnivore, deep into keto, I was kind of a keto hater before, I'm not going to lie to you. But what I'm seeing more and more of is this like the standard American diet is just packed full of processed foods sugars and seed oils. So like what I think what we do in, in the, in the U S or the West is we take a bunch of ingredients and we turn them into other foods, right? Like what's in a muffin, not much, not like not much in terms of ingredients, nothing healthy is in there, right? We're talking about a lot of fats, a lot of processed sugars, a lot of simple carbohydrates. And that's what most people are primarily eating. And so they, they eat a muffin or a pop tart or something for breakfast. And then they're surprised that they feel like absolute dog shit all day. Well, how, like, how else would you feel if you're going to spike your blood sugar, and then it crashes on you three or four times during the day, you're never going to get ahead with that sort of, that sort of fuel source. And I think that just like, so I, I was, I had an amazing experience. I got to travel through South America with my wife in 2015. And what I love about South and Central America is that they take ingredients and cook ingredients and give it to you. So you eat ingredients all the time. So even if it's like higher carb, you're eating your rice or potatoes or whatever else you're not eating muffins and breads and different things that have been just like the life completely processed out of them. And I think Casey, like going into the future, having a six pack is going to be more of a status symbol than having a nice watch or a nice car. I think we're going to see less, less abs and more nice cars and stuff like that moving in the future, because it is so, so difficult to, for the average person to be able to ascertain between what's a healthy food versus what is processed garbage, especially since you can go pay for a label that says keto or whole 30 or, or organic on it. So these, we have these predatory, predatory practices within the food space where, you know, we're not necessarily seeing the full picture and it's making it harder and harder and harder for the average person to go to the store. And even if you are reading labels, you go to a label, like a, like a store, I saw something that said like keto cake mix, right? And I look at the back and it's got 40 grams of sugar in it, but somehow by adding chicory root extract to it, we can delete that sugar. Like, give me a break. Like, so it's no wonder that people are getting fatter and sicker and worse off in their health because this shit is very difficult and I'm a professional in this. And so to, to see these, the, like the way that the, like the food industry has taken advantage of people and see like 
obesity levels on the rise, pre-diabetes, diet, type two diabetes, just like completely spiking out of control. It's no wonder that some people are turning to carnivore or keto because it gives you these very specific guidelines of like, okay, do not eat processed foods. And that's probably one of the best things that people can do for their life. Yeah, I agree. If somebody follows any diet, as long as they're getting rid of some of the processed crap that they're eating, they would be healthier for sure. You could be vegan, you could be carnivore, anything in between. That's the biggest challenge though. You're right. Is all that processed crap. I lived in Brazil for two years and you're absolutely right. Like you eat rice and beans and chicken on the bone and people do not have endless resources. They eat very simply, but you really, that was, I guess for me, the first time in my life, I really appreciated simple meals with simple taste, a little bit of salt. And it, it, it's totally delicious. You don't read labels down there. You just eat no. that kind of normal food and it's amazing. And, and I love how you explained some of the processed food and the combination between the carbohydrates and the fat they're yes. making it into every single meal it's a combination of the two that seems to be very harmful is that correct i i 100 agree and so i have i like i love frameworks i love thinking about things in terms of like how do we how do we make this easy to understand so one of my big frameworks on how do you decide what food you're going to eat is a doesn't have protein in it you gotta have protein every time you eat food it should have protein in it that's a simple rule that you can follow that's going to keep you healthier than 90 percent of everybody else in the world one of my clients just opened a vegan restaurant. He's like, come to the vegan restaurant. It's called Sin Muerte, which I love. But also I was like, I'm never going to go to your vegan restaurant. I will not order food that does not have protein in it. That does not have, that is not, I'm, I'm only going to consume animal flesh. Thanks for, thanks, but no thanks. Um, but I think that one of the, the other frameworks is avoid eating carbohydrates and fat in the same meal. And not to say don't sprinkle cheese on stuff, have a little olive oil there. But if you're having pizza, which is just cheese and bread, you're having lasagna, pasta and bread, your pasta and, and cheese, you know, like if you're having these sorts of things, bean burritos are one is the top four number, like the, the fourth most ordered food on DoorDash in 2022. Really? Yeah. I did that wow. research the other day. Yeah. Wow. But all these foods have zero protein, have high carbs and high fats. And I think of carbs as kind of like an accelerant for your fat. So if you want to, if you want to build more muscle, you have carbohydrates and proteins, it accelerates that muscle gain process. If you want to have, if you want to bulk up your fat stores, have carbs and fats at the same time. It's going to accelerate because when we have, we know that when you have blood sugar rises, our insulin level rises and our insulin is like a key goes into our cells, opens the door for, for whatever we're shuttling into the cells. So if we can avoid having those high fat, high carb dishes together, again, like it's just these little things that are going to separate us as time goes on. And as this shit gets harder and harder for, for normal people to do. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So how do you transition somebody? Let's say somebody's coming from a standard American diet. How do you transition somebody onto a low carbohydrate diet? And then how, how do you, uh, how do you do the, the carbohydrate backloading that you're talking about? Yeah. So I feel like this carbohydrate backloading is a really nice segue into even like more of a ketogenic or, or carnivore lifestyle. For most of the people that I talk to, they're really busy. They don't have a lot of expertise. I do think carnivore is an advanced diet. I don't think people should just jump right into it without, without like understanding how it all works, even though I like it. So I think this is an easy way to do it. So what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach people, okay, what are carbohydrates? What are you, where are you finding them in? And how can we limit those for our breakfast? Just our first meal of the day. How do we have a high protein and a high fat breakfast? And what's crazy about this, Casey, is that when we start getting people to adopt this philosophy for breakfast, they feel way better. We don't have to do anything else that we get them with some water in them in the morning. We get them a high protein, high fat breakfast. And all of a sudden they're like, I got a lot of energy. I feel great. I'm like, you don't feel great. You feel freaking normal. This is how you're supposed to feel. Thank you. Nothing, yeah. Like you felt, you feel like you have a low grade fever and it's like you're like flu symptoms all the time in your life because you eat like shit, you know, and we can just change that just a little bit. You get to start feeling normal again. You're like, oh my gosh, it's way better over here. So we get the buy-in because people under start understanding my energy's better. I feel better. My, I'm not having cravings all the time. I don't want to crawl under my desk and take a nap. So just that little bit of buy-in. And that's one of the reasons I think that I tend to go a little bit more hardcore with the first month of my program because I want people to get great results. And I want to keep that momentum going. A lot of people are like, okay, you having two sodas, let's just do one soda. I'm like, no, I want you to drop 10, 15 pounds in the first month. I want you to feel amazing. I want you to see some crazy results. So you just keep going. So once we get them there, then I just start trying to push lunch back a little farther and farther and farther, and then keep them having a high protein and then high vegetables for lunch. So something that's going to be satiating, it's going to keep them full. My favorite food for, to, like, to put people on, especially new people to the program is chicken thighs and carrots, baby carrots, because hmm. you can eat a shit ton of those and you're, and you're feeling really good afterwards and you're hmm. full. You're not hungry. You're like, well, like my energy feels stable. 
And then for dinner, I go, okay, great. You have a client dinner. You have a family. Your kids want to eat PB and J's. Great. You can eat whatever carbohydrate you want for dinner. Have some protein, have some vegetables with it. So I tell people sometimes, Casey, like if you want to have, you know, like grilled shrimp, Captain Crunch, and then broccoli, like that's gross. But like, do you like follow the framework? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's so interesting. So do you find that people can get really successful, even if they're having carbohydrates later in the day, they, they get so much momentum from the breakfast and lunch, that they do okay results wise? Yeah. And I think that like a lot of times, especially like the, one of the tenets of carb backloading is that as we go through the day and we burn out our glycogen stores and our muscles and our liver, you know, we get to the point where our body's burning more and more fat for fuel. And then we just like add the carbohydrates back in. So rather than the carbohydrates going towards fat stores, they're going towards replenishing our liver, like the gly liver glycogen and the muscle glycogen. So it's this kind of this nice balance where you get to have, you get to have your cake and eat it too, essentially. And like, yeah, you're probably not burning as much fat as if you just kind of completely cut out carbohydrates. But for the, for most people, that's not the reality. So if I can give them some, some intermediate step, they can always ascend when they're ready, but also they're, that's now the new standard. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like about carbohydrates in the evening is that it allows people like, you know, you have a Chipotle burrito and what do you want to do afterwards? I take a nap. <laughs> I was going to ask you about sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So having, having your carbohydrates later in the evening, it helps you unwind. That's rest and digest for sure. So I think that's kind of more what we, what we want to do is kind of have that, like eat real lean, have a lot of like, I think of it as like a nutritional insurance policy throughout the day. If you're eating really light and then you have a bigger meal in the evening, potatoes, meat, vegetables, you're going to feel really good. You're going to sleep really well. And so I think it's, it's the proofs in the pudding because people start seeing like, man, this is not that hard and I feel really good. And Oh, look at my, my weight is going down too. Yeah. So if you hit them three, three different ways, they start seeing like, okay, I could, I could see how I could do this for the rest of my life.